talk about the biggest mistake you can possibly make in your cane self-defense training. We're warming up with this spin, and I'm gonna give you a quick hint, we're gonna get right to it. The spin is gonna be part of the discussion. From here, you're gonna bring it over your body and back. Just like you're doing a palm strike or a slap across the face and a backhand coming back across the other side of their face for self-defense. So you warm up, simple spin, your hand is mostly closed. It's not squeezing, it's open enough that you can crank it forward in this motion. You're coming from the back of your body to the front of your body. And this is gonna to start to get blood into the joints. It's gonna heal up your hands, it's gonna improve circulation, it's gonna help with things like arthritis, it's gonna help improve your strength, go across the body and back. You can do this standing or sitting in a chair at the edge of the bed in a wheelchair. It works in all different positions. And the reason you're gonna do all of this spinning is the number one reason that we're here making this video today. It's about building strength, building speed, power, coordination, properly warming up your body, building grip strength so that when you strike, you use your cane for self-defense, you don't lose it. But it's not for self-defense by itself. So the biggest mistake that most people make in their self-defense cane training is they adopt this spinning, they spend so much time spinning, using the spin as a means of self-defense is the biggest mistake people make. You can spin and strike and hit somebody. You can bring it back and you can be hitting them this way. But if you start to spin, thinking that you're gonna do this and move in like the blade of a propeller in that old Indiana Jones movie, when Indiana Jones is fighting the big Nazi and that's just gonna stop somebody or chop them up, that's the biggest mistake you can make. You have to know why you spin and you have to use it for the right purpose. The spinning is to increase your blood flow into the joints. The spinning is to force you to squeeze your abdominal muscles and improve your posture during the workout. Spinning gets your heart rate up, so it's gonna lean you out faster. It's part of the workout. Spinning helps to teach you spatial awareness, where this cane is as it relates to your body, where your body is in space and time. It teaches proprioception. You almost get a sixth sense feeling in your hands for how this thing moves when you do this spinning. Spinning is not a self-defense move. It looks like it, seems super cool. Some people use it for that. And I'm not saying that 100% of the time I'm right because sometimes I make mistakes and I'm wrong. But from my experience, from all of the teaching, when you spin and you start to hit, you lose accuracy, you lose control, you lose opportunity to defend yourself. From this position, I can put it here and I can be standing, waiting, tell the guy back up, don't come closer. And if he does or when he does, stick that right into his groin. One shot, one fast, explosive move has immediate impact. Where if I'm spinning and my timing is off even a little bit and he closes that distance and I get wrapped up or it not, or I do hit him, but it has a very weak effect because the spins are not very strong. Even fast spins with a heavy cane, like this Cane Masters self-defense training cane, or even with this Top of the line, Cane Masters Traveler Self-Defense Dojo, or it's not a dojo training cane, it's a self-defense cane. This thing that has all the extra features that are designed to break bones and smash, this is very effective for self-defense. However, when you start to make the one biggest mistake most people make in their self-defense cane training, you get into this spinning and you hit something, you have almost no power, it bounces right off. It's very hard to be accurate. I don't care how much you try. I do a lot of spinning. And I encourage you to spin as much as you can in every workout. And I want to distinguish the reason for it. I want to tell you it's in order to build callus on your hands, right? So that when you're here, and let's say you use two canes, one for mobility, one to stand upright so you don't fall over, and the other for self-defense, you can now get into this position and your cane will slide easily, more easily through your hand because of the calluses, and that comes from the spinning. When you do strike, whether it's a thrust 
or a slash, or you're going to use the back end of your cane, that hook as a big knuckle or a big hammer smashing right into their face. You're going to have a better grip from all of the spinning. Your overall fitness is going to improve from all of this spinning. But the biggest mistake that people make in their self-defense cane training is they uh, adopt spinning as a self-defense technique by itself. So much so for some people, the biggest mistake they make is that's all they do. They do, they get into combat cane spinning, which is a lot of fun. There's a lot of value in it. It's a very good thing to do to add to your training. It's good cross training, but it is not self-defense training by itself. It's like spinning the martial arts staff. Spinning a staff is a lot of fun. There are a lot of cool things that you can do with it, but it's not for self-defense. If you were to defend yourself with a staff, you're gonna to stick to thrusts and slash, slashing strikes, pushing strikes, and with the cane, because it's unique, you're gonna rip using that big tooth right there. I wanted to show you this one last time. In case you do need two canes, remember, you can lean on one and use the other one for self-defense. I'm gonna put this away. We are gonna talk about what you can do, how to make your self-defense cane training more effective after you warm up with this spinning. But I wanna talk about how to do the spinning properly and two ways that you can do spinning. The first way is the way you see right here, where you're just holding it right here in the crook, palm facing the sky. The long side comes out of your thumb. Your hand is mostly closed, but you're not squeezing. It has to be loose enough that it can go around, but closed enough that it doesn't fly out of your hand. So you wanna keep it closed and loose. And it's just like you're churning butter or cranking an old car to get it started. It's going around. As you start to go a little bit faster, you're gonna pop it forward. Do this for 30 seconds, squeeze your stomach up and in, tuck your chin a little bit, and then bring it over and back from side to side across your body. Once you do this for 30 seconds, put it into the other hand. All I did was palm to palm to go to the other hand. Move this out of the way. Now the long side's coming out of the thumb again, the hand's mostly closed. And again, the biggest mistake that people make in their self-defense cane training is they spin for self-defense. Use your spinning as a warm-up, as strength building, to build callus on your hands, proprioception, spatial awareness, timing and distance, to improve your workout, for fun, to improve your brain elasticity. Those are all great reasons to spin. After you do this for 30 seconds, you can put it back in the other hand and repeat that. Do two or three sets. If you want to progress and work up to a new technique, if you've been doing this for a while, from here, when it's on the opposite side of my body, I'm going to turn sideways so you can see it. So I'm spinning. I start to go over and back. When I get it to the opposite side, I'm going to turn my palm open and allow it to come over the back of my hand. Big Man Certified says smash the like button. Thank you, Big Man. I really appreciate that. Yeah, if you like cane training, self-defense training, martial arts training, any kind of training, if you enjoy this type of thing as much as I do, please give me a thumbs up. Now when I'm here, this is kind of a level up, I'm just letting it go around the back of my hand, almost like a wrist roll with another martial arts weapon, like a bow or a Joe, any martial arts staff. After I do this for a little bit, 30 seconds, I bring it back over, you can start over, 30 seconds here, third spin, just here. So that's three different spins. It looks like this, starting here, over and back, spinning here, over and back, out to here. When you're ready, throw it in the other hand. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, take your time. There's no way to do it wrong. But remember, the biggest mistake most people make in their self-defense cane training is they're spinning for self-defense. Spin is important for so many, it's like a box or jumping rope if you're a boxer. You would jump rope, but you wouldn't take the rope in the ring to fight the guy he's trying to smash your face in. You would have your hands up like a boxer. You would hit these things, right? You'd punch the heavy bag, you'd punch the head bag, you'd punch the speed bag, but you don't take any of those into the fight. You take your fists, you take your brain, you take your body, maybe a pair of gloves, maybe a groin cup and a mouthpiece if you're smart. But the rest of it, that's only for training. Spinning is training. The biggest mistake you can make is thinking that spinning by itself, you're daring them, come on, man. You try to get through, I'm gonna chop you up. 
just like a propeller. And that doesn't work. It simply doesn't. It just, you, there's not enough power in it um, because you have to loosen your grip in order to do the spin. Can you hit hard with a spin like that? Yes. Do you have to have impeccable timing? Yes. Do you want to rely on impeccable timing when it's life or death? Not me. Or if they have a knife, I would rather have this position and simply thrust in their head, smash through their face, blast them right through the teeth for self-defense. That's what I want you to train. All right. Now, the second way that you can spin is I let my hand slide down the shaft a little bit. I still have the longest part coming out of my hand, and I'm going to turn it to the outside, making this orbital spin, orbiting around my head. After I do that for 30 seconds, I'm gonna bring it to the inside and spin that. Now, what's the purpose of this spinning? It's certainly not for self-defense by itself, but it's gonna make you better at self-defense with your self-defense train cane or cane self-defense cane or even a regular walking cane. Using this spin or doing the spin is starting to increase flexibility here. Um, the endurance, I'm gonna get better endurance in my muscles and tendons, means I can last longer in the fight. Most importantly, I'm getting strength here in the forearm, in the hands, in the fingers. After I do that 30 seconds, I'm gonna go outside, inside. I'm gonna do this for 30 seconds. I'm gonna let that hand rest, put it into the other hand, and I'm gonna let it spin. Outside of the head and then inside of the body. And it's just going tip to the floor, thumb to the floor, and it comes behind my head and back out. And I know that seems like an oversimplification, but when you haven't done it before, a little bit extra tips always help, in my experience. Then I put those together in a figure eight spin or infinity sign. Think about carving that figure eight with your thumb. Do that for 30 seconds, give that hand a rest, come to the first hand, and I'm gonna drop it back, palm faces the sky, and go in reverse. So now I'm getting strength and flexibility in a different range of motion, 30 seconds there, bring it to the inside, 30 seconds here, put them together, and I have a reverse figure eight spin. And what you're doing here, this is a level up. If you've been spinning for a while, if you've been doing this kind of combat cane spinning, Caners worldwide, you want to add this wrist mobility spin, both forward and backward. That's going to allow you to strike so much harder, so much faster for self-defense. Then put it in the other hand. Again, come up a little bit. Backward. This is the reverse spin. So it just comes back past your ear. Palm faces the sky. Finish it. You might not have as much flexibility at the beginning, but you will keep moving in the direction you want to go, just like yoga, and bring it over. All those years of practicing yoga, I don't know if I got any more flexible. I picked up some cool sayings, though. <laughs> namaste. If you're going to yoga class, namaste here, and practice my cane spinning. I did yoga enough. Nothing against the yoga. I'd rather get wrist flexibility so that I can smash something with my cane for self-defense. Put it together, side to side, reverse figure eight, pulling it up, and I'm disguising repetition. I'm gonna be slashing and striking. Um, oh, Doug says, thanks, this will help with the wrist. Yes, but Doug, go slowly, really slowly. And I know Doug said you, you ordered one of these uh, Cane Masters canes from the link below. You got the thinner one, which is going to be a little bit lighter weight. That's perfect. But just start slowly. Allow yourself, when it comes to wrists, elbows, and shoulders, small muscle groups, tight tendons, you don't want to push it. You want to take your time. The third kind of spinning is finger rolling. Now, obvious, this is not for self-defense. Unless you think of tightness and shoulder pain and elbow pain and wrist pain and carpal tunnel and finger trigger finger pain as an assault on your comfort, then this is self-defense against getting tight wrists and arms. This will allow you to practice extension and flexion, extension and flexion, opening and closing. What that'll do is that'll 
rinse out a lot of the inflammation in your uh, nerves. That'll also improve your overall grip strength. Let me see if I can reverse it here. It's hard, no, yeah, it's a little bit harder there to reverse, but you can practice going both directions and then going the other hand, 30 seconds each direction. But that extension and flexion, the finger rolls, really, really help you. Matthew says, can't wait to get this cane, want to get a feel for one, then we'll probably get a second. Matthew, go for the 7 eighths inch. That should be an option on any of these canes. And if it's not, just call Keith from Cane Masters. Let me know or let him know that you want to do this. Welcome, uh, Danielle, new member of the channel. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you joining as a member. Help keep this channel going. Got some new plans for the new year. Do more of these more consistently on a schedule so you know when we're going to work out together. But Danielle, welcome. Everybody else, welcome Danielle, if you would. Is it Danielle or Danielle? Maybe Danielle. I think that's how I read it. You're going in one direction. Yeah, Matthew, I think you told me last time you got the 7 8 inch. Oh, good. Yeah, and that, so what that is, is especially if you get it in hickory, it's going to be extremely uh, strong. It's going to be hard for that to break. And because it's 7 8 inches, it's a little bit skinnier, a little bit less material. It's a lot more powerful, or it's a lot more light. So you're going to be able to move it faster, strike harder without all that extra weight. It's going to be easier on your hands. Hickory is, yeah, good. Hick, Matthew says he got hickory. Hickory is now my first choice. This is oak. I also like oak. But you can get a hickory or oak. Hickory is just a couple dollars more, but it's well worth it. Your overall investment is not very much when you come to these because they're going to last forever, and, and you're going to be able to do so much for it. Are with it. Hello, Richard. It's good to see you. All right, so we talked about three ways to spin the cane combat cane spinning, uh, wrist mobility spins, right? Orbitals and figure eights, and then finger spins. And none of these, this is the biggest mistake people make in their combat or in their cane self defense training. The biggest mistake people make in their cane self defense training is thinking that spins are self defense moves. They're not. They make you better at self-defense moves because they improve flexibility, mobility, callus on your hands, strength, uh, proprioception, spatial awareness, timing and distance, improve your overall health. They're going to lean you out because it improves your posture. You can do these standing or sitting. You can do it if, um, if you need two canes. You can lean on one cane and spin the other cane and practice that way. It's, in, it's just an awesome way to improve your overall felt, uh, health and fitness. S says she wants your young adult sons to learn, yeah, stick self, more self-defense, absolutely. All of us should learn more self-defense, that's my opinion. Now, let's talk about what to do past the spins. I want you to look at, think about three categories of basic strikes. The first one is gonna be a thrusting move, coming straight through the middle, that's my first favorite. You have to adopt the principles of self-defense and apply it to cane self-defense. The first principle is situational awareness. Pay attention to what's happening around you. Number two, get in a better position. In this case, put the cane between you and the threat. The first way you're gonna get there is if you're in this position, simply lift it up, let your hand slide down, and stand behind it. We watched The Princess Bride last night, and uh, Neil Montoya, you know, he's always saying, you know, he wants to avenge the, the death of his father. The sword play in that movie is so amazing, so fun to watch, great fencing. I always think of a fencer in this position. Get behind your foil. Get behind your sword. You're going to thrust. That's the basic fastest, that uh, shortest distance between two points, that thrusting motion. And think about what targets you can remove or destroy. This is a principle of self-defense. Number three, it's a question. So number one, situation awareness. Number two, here's the threat. Get in a better position. Stand behind your weapon or your cane for self-defense. Number three, ask yourself, what can I remove or destroy for self-defense? His ability to see, go right through his eyes. His ability to breathe temporarily through his nose or mouth. Smash him in the nose. Stick his teeth down his throat for self-defense. Or permanently through the throat. Or his ability to breathe and stand upright. Or between the belly button and the private parts. Be his ability to stand up. Thrust in any of those positions straight forward. That's your first technique. Second technique from here. Come into your shoulder so that you're behind your in slashing strikes, right? Think about Temple. Remove his ability to be awake. Turn his lights off, right? 
Literally, smash him right in the brain, not for self-defense. Knock him out. You don't have to worry about the knife, what else he has. Start with a thrust and strike here. Bring it to the other shoulder, add a third strike. Practice this in combination. From here, it's just under your body, better position, thrust, angle down, angle down, bring it straight across, bring it back, smash on top, grab it here and blast through his face. Use this big nasty tooth to remove some of the skin off of his face for self-defense. Maybe pull an eye out or his nose off his face or his teeth right out of his mouth for self-defense. This technique I want you to practice, it's here. Better position. Better position, either you're gonna step in or step back. Either one of those, whether I step in, that makes me smaller, I step back, that makes me smaller, and pulls my vital spots that you're gonna to try to get, you're the bad guy. Pulls my heart, lungs, eyes, face, everything away from them more. And in its place, the place of my body, I'm gonna put my stick. Now they gotta deal with this, right? You have a thrust, angle down, angle down, come through the horizontal strike, back with the horizontal strike, straight down the middle, right on top of their head, lights out, smashing as hard as you can, bring it into the other hand, stepping forward. Now you're gonna finish them off for self-defense, blasting straight through like you're doing a push-up. This hard piece of hickory or oak going right through the soft body. Then while you're there, make sure, that, see how that tooth is just sticking there, ready? Just snatch from here, straight across to finish them off for self-defense. Practice that in both sides. Put in this one, step in, thrust, angle one, angle two, bring it through, horizontal, horizontal, vertical, right on top, hands together, feet together, smashing and ripping. Practice that for self-defense. You might not use it in that order, but now you have a way to practice to get better. And if you like this kind of self-defense training, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and consider joining if you haven't done so already. And thank you to all of you who have already done that for me. Now, the second way I want you to think about carrying your cane is to turn the crook around so it's right here. From here, I can snap it up really fast into the groin. Let's say that's not his groin, it's a little too high. Maybe that's the bottom of his chin, right? But it comes straight up, smashing here. Now it's in this position, thrust here. Bring your shoulder, smashing down on top. So from this position, snapping it up, thrusting in, into your shoulder, and I get to the shoulder by pulling my hand, not turning my back. Just pull it in, because I want to keep it between me and him. Bam, really hard, really fast, that strike going right to the temple. And this is where you don't have to be as strong and as big as I am for this to work. I, that's, that's the hardest part about this, is people see me sometimes and they say, well, you know, you're stronger, you've been, your martial arts have been doing this for 41 years, which is true, but that, that's not it. That's not what makes this work. What makes this work is basic physics, basic mechanics. This snatches up really fast. I don't care how strong or how fast you are or are not. Right in between the legs. Then you put your hand here, and your whole body steps in and thrusts it right into their midsection. Pull this to your shoulder. From this position, it's a small move with your hand, but it accelerates to the tip of this hard piece of oak and smash right through their temple, through their jaw, through the ear. From here, you can pull your hands together and blast them right through the face, turn this and rip it across. That's the finishing move of the day for self-defense. Snatch them up, thrust, shoulder, blast, rip. Put it in the other hand, do the same thing. Now here's, here, this is the second combination. Now you're practicing like 10 different strikes and two combinations is a good way to build a good workout for you. Snatch them up, smash them in from the shoulder down, bring it through, blast this piece of wood through their face, and then this hook, just turn it and rip it through soft flesh. You don't have to be strong because you're gonna let the oak or the hickory of your cane master self-defense cane do all of the work for you. The third thing, third way that I want you to think about carrying it is in this position. This is ergonomically stronger, by the way. And remember I said, because I know Matthew uses two canes, one to get around and one for self-defense. You can lean on one while you do all of these techniques. You can do them all one-handed. 
they all, well, almost all the techniques one-handed. Obviously, you can't do certain things, but from here, you can snatch them up. You can slide that up across the side of their head. You can bring it down the other way across the head. But this third way, I want you to slide it up, pop it up into this position. Here's where that callus comes in. We started off this video talking about the biggest mistake people use or people often make when doing cane self-defense training is thinking that the spins are the, the most important self-defense move and they're not. They are in the respect that they make all your other self-defense moves better, but spinning is not self-defense. Spinning is cross-training for self-defense. So what you're gonna do is turn it out this way. I put my weight on the other one if I have to, or I'm walking with this one. When the threat comes in, I get into the better position by sliding this up. Now, if I do have the other hand free, I put the other hand up and I say, back up, you're too close. But then I have the ability, whether I have a hand on the cane, or the other hand up, this is an immediate thrust. This big hammer, this big fist, this big knuckle coming in, straight in, and again, let the wood do the work. Smashing nose, teeth, eyes, face, throat, uh, solar plexus. From here, pop it up, your other hand is up, always guarding your head, but it's just also saying stop, right? It looks like I'm saying stop. Video camera catches what you're doing, and you have to go to court, and they say, well, the guy was carrying a cane, he, he, wanted, to, he wanted to get in a fight. And you say, no, 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 he's carrying a cane because he wanted to defend himself, or he needed a cane, or it's none of your business why he was carrying a cane. But the fact is, what we all see is the guy's trying to, to defuse it. He's telling him, don't come any closer. I will defend myself. And then he had to. He was in imminent, imminent danger. She was in imminent danger. She smashed the guy right through his teeth, not just teeth, straight down his throat for self-defense. What's wrong with that? Nothing. That's your right. So you have a forward thrusting motion. This jab, think of a boxer's jab punch. Here, and then back. And notice when I bring it back, I don't bring my elbow here. I bring my elbow under my body, just like a boxer. Boxers should punch this way and not this way. Punching this way. So box this way, and then I'm gonna hook it around and smash using, again, that big knuckle, that big hammer, to smash into the jaw, the eyes, the temple, the ear, into the neck, into the ribs, into that last floating rib. I'm gonna smash here, and then I have this, and rip it straight across. Does this work if you're using one cane to lean on? Oh, hey, Ed, it's good to see you. Ed said he was at the theater. They asked if he needed the cane. ADA states, the Americans with Disability Act states that you can carry your cane wherever you go. The HIPAA law says, uh, Doug says it does hit hard on the heavy bag, and Richard says, thanks, Matt, appreciate training videos. My pleasure. Thank you for suggesting that we do more of these, Richard. I hope to um, always... I do the training every day. I hope to give you the opportunity to train as often as you like. If you're leaning on one, you can still do all these techniques. You pop this up, there's the thrust, there's the hook, there's the ripping motion. You can even use this to rip in to all the flesh in the back, in the back of the neck, in the back of the head, into the ear, into the nose, into the eyes, into the teeth. You don't need a lot of power for this to work. You just need a little bit of pressure. You start to hit those nerves in the face on anybody. I don't care how big and strong they are, or the neck, or the chest, nerves. With that little point, that hard point, you don't have to have a lot of power, just a little bit, to have the desired effect, which is for them to let go of you, to stop messing with you, to back up. You already told them back up. You defend yourself. Now you have to. I was saying, uh, Ed Dean was saying that uh, he went to the theater. They want to know why he had a cane. He's like, the American Disabilities Act allows me to carry my cane. It's a medical device. It's a mobility device. You're not allowed to tell me I can't. And yes, that's true. You can take it onto the airplane. You can take it through TSA. You can take it to the bank, take it to your kid's school. All of that is true. The um, Health Information Privacy Act, or ACTS, say, say that they can't make you prove that you need it. They're not allowed to peer into like on the spot, come up and say that the $8 an hour kid working at the uh, movie theater can't say, show me your medical note where it says you need to carry a cane, sir, ma'am. No, it's my, it's my personal privacy, buddy. Don't ask me that. <laughs> and here's the cool thing. If you go to that first link below, 
there's a card that you can buy and put in your wallet. It's only $10. Or look at the little picture and write it all down. Make your own card for zero. And whatever it costs to laminate it, stick it in your wallet, stick it in your purse, and it'll give you all of the same rule, all the things I'm telling you better than I can say it. You can just pull it out and read it, just like a police officer. When I was a military policeman, I had to carry in my wallet next to my badge the Miranda rights because they didn't want you trying to make them up on your own. They didn't want you to try to remember what, what, what are the Miranda rights. So when you whip, whip it out, you're reading it word for word. It's a script. Carry that script. Either, like I said, go to that first link below, the Cane Masters link. You'll find on there when you click on one of the canes, at the bottom it'll say, do you want to order or add a mobility card to put in your wallet for $10? And I don't have one. <laughs> I wrote it all down. So if you want to do that or buy one and put it in your wallet, whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah. You have your card. You just whip it out and you say, blah, 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 whatever's on the card. And if the kid still looks at you sideways, you smile at him and say, can I have my popcorn now? And then you walk to your seat with your cane, right? <laughs> That's how that works. All right, Richie said he got one of those cards earlier this year. Yeah, it's a great, I mean, for 10 bucks, it's indestructible. It's made the same way that the new um, license cards are, uh, driver's license cards are. Or like a... Uh, you know, identity card. You put it in your wallet, you have it for the next 50, 100 years. That's how long you're gonna live when you start doing this cane training. Don't hold me at that, I, that you know, discl full disclaimer. I say a lot of things that aren't true, except the th things that I know to be true about how to defend yourself with cane. Anyway, those are the things I want you to work on. In this last position, practice pop it up, pop it up. If you have your other hand on the cane, leave it down. If it's, you don't have a cane in the other hand, Get them both up. Practice getting that better position when you can. Make your body smaller target, stepping in or stepping back. Thrust. Yeah, um, Richard says carry it like your CCW card. Exactly. My CCW card is right behind the driver's license. Right behind the CCW card is the one that I made for the cane. All right, Matthew, we'll see you later. Get in this position. Thrust, hook, rip. That's all I've got for today. I'm going to be working um, on another video later today, number three in the series of unarmed self defense traditional martial arts. We're going to do a traditional martial arts class for those of you who are interested later this afternoon. I'll see you then.